Overcoming recurrent pregnancy loss can sometimes feel like a losing game uh, because once patients have gone through it a number of times, um, they can often feel like there's very little additional information being provided to them and what the actual cause is and what can be done to help prevent uh, such a tragedy from happening again. And I think uh, there's little conversation taking place around what are the modifiable risk factors um, and risk factors in general for increased risk of miscarriage. And so this is something we often talk about on our podcast and our research blog post to help shed more light um, on other variables that can actually, from an evidence-based perspective, have been shown to affect your chances of not just getting pregnant, but staying pregnant with a healthy pregnancy and carrying to live birth. Um, and one of these important variables that we're seeing based on a new research paper that was published in the Journal of Fertility and Sterility in 2022, looked at the role of one very important vitamin. And what they found was that if patients were deficient in this vitamin, they were at a significantly increased risk of miscarriage compared to patients that had sufficient levels of this vitamin. And so this specific vitamin or vitamin D3 that they identified, um, they looked at 10 research papers and they compiled the data from all the uh, 10 research papers. Six were observational studies, four of these studies, four of the 10 were randomized clinical trials. So the, the sum of this data showed that patients who had what's called vitamin D deficiency. So vitamin D deficiency, first off, is uh, identified as less than 50 nanomoles per liter on a blood test. So if there's less than 50 nanomoles per liter on a blood test, that patient is diagnosed with vitamin D deficiency. And a patient that has vitamin D deficiency was at almost a two times, two times increased risk of experiencing a miscarriage, unfortunately, relative to patients that had vitamin D sufficiency, meaning that they had normal or healthy levels of vitamin D, which in this study was identified as greater than 75 nanomoles per liter um, on a blood test. So um, if it's greater than 75, there's almost half the risk of having a miscarriage compared to patients that had less than 50. Um, and then we have what's called vitamin D insufficiency. So it's kind of in between those two ranges. So there's vitamin D sufficiency greater than 75, vitamin D deficiency, which is less than 50, and then 50 to 75, that in between range is what we identify as a vitamin D insufficiency. So it's not low enough to be a deficiency, but it is an insufficient amount of vitamin D on a blood test. And patients that had vitamin D insufficiency or vitamin D deficiency, when we combine these two groups, and compare them to patients who had vitamin D sufficiency, so healthy levels of vitamin D, there was almost a 60% increased risk of miscarriage relative to patients who had healthy levels of vitamin D. And so when we're looking at this data, number one, what we have to identify is that this is a correlation. We can't necessarily establish a causation from this data. So why would having a high level of vitamin D be associated with an increased um, risk of carrying to term and having a healthy uh, uh, term labor. Um, it could be perhaps because those patients are getting more time in the sun and are more physically active and uh, healthier lifestyles, more active lifestyles are associated with me better metabolic health that may confer some protection on the pregnancy or is it because patients who are vitamin D sufficient probably have healthier diets or they're taking supplements with vitamin D and therefore more likely to be taking other supplements such as vitamin C or vitamin E, which we know are antioxidants, may have a role in affecting egg quality. So when we look at this data, we have to take it with a grain of salt in the sense that we don't know for sure if it's actually the vitamin D that's leading to this increased chance of live birth and healthy pregnancy. But um, when we're looking at 10 different clinical um, research papers, and then we take into account other research around vitamin D and fertility. For example, we have seen randomized clinical trials looking at how the vitamin D may be uh, related to chance of pregnancy with IVF, it may affect implantation rates. We've seen for specific conditions like polycystic ovarian syndrome, how vitamin D actually has a very important role in helping to maintain cycle regularity. It may affect the severity of symptoms, it may help to reduce severity 
of symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome. And we also see that vitamin D has a very important role in um, affecting or modulating the activity of the COM-T enzyme in the liver, which can affect estrogen levels. So we see vitamin D deficiency um, or certain ethnic backgrounds that have um, an issue with this COM-T enzyme in the liver um, may actually be a high risk of things like fibroids. So when we take into account the whole picture of, you know, vitamin D seems to have a pretty significant role when it comes to reproductive health and fertility. And for, for male partners, we do see that vitamin D can also impact things like testosterone production, sperm motility by affecting intracellular calcium levels in the sperm cells. Um, it's kind of uh, hard to justify why we wouldn't check this vitamin level for patients, especially because it's quite easy to modify um, and quite easy to um, basically solve. If someone has a vitamin D deficiency, sometimes it's as simple as making sure you're getting more sun, changing up the diet a little bit, or giving a vitamin D supplement. Um, now, often patients will come and they're already taking vitamin D and there's a pitfall to just taking a vitamin D supplement, you know, like, oh, you know, your prenatal has a bit of vitamin D um, or the multivitamin you're taking, or you might be taking a separate uh, vitamin D supplement. There is a big pitfall with this, which is vitamin D is notoriously difficult to absorb as a fat soluble vitamin. So it's not easily absorbed compared to water soluble supplements or vitamins like B, B vitamins, for example. Um, so what can happen is if someone has poor nutrient absorption or they have issues with the gut microbiome, they may not actually be absorbing that much vitamin D. And we see this in clinical practice often. So someone could be taking half the dose of vitamin D, but have double the test results when compared to someone else. So how much vitamin D you're taking doesn't necessarily infer uh, that you have good vitamin D levels. So we often see patients who are in either of two scenarios, which is they take vitamin D, yet their levels are still low. They're either insufficient or deficient, which means it's not about the vitamin D you're getting, it's about how much you're actually absorbing. And so then we have to look at the more root cause of why aren't, uh, why isn't the patient absorbing the vitamin D? What's going on with the digestive tract, digestive function, and gut health? The second is where patients are taking vitamin D for a very long period of time and the levels are way too high. So one thing we didn't cover earlier in this video um, and this, this podcast is that patients can also develop hypervitaminosis D, which is vitamin D levels going to a very toxic level. And this is actually associated with increased risk of other complications like kidney stones, higher risk of calcifications in the arteries. Um, it's actually associated with increased risk of seizures in very rare and severe cases. Um, so we don't wanna just take vitamin D just because you know you read it's healthy for fertility and you're just taking it nonstop for months at a very high dose. So the best thing to do is to speak with your licensed naturopathic doctor, figure out if vitamin D is actually relative to your scenario, if it's worthwhile, um, checking and, and, and evaluating whether you need to increase the dose, decrease the dose, uh, making sure you're having optimal levels there. And then based on the blood test, actually determining what an appropriate dose for you would be. Uh, for some patients, an appropriate dose is 1,000 international units. For some patients, it may be much higher. And what is appropriate time frame that you should be on the supplement for? Because you don't want to just be on it permanently. As a fat-soluble vitamin, you do store vitamin D, so you don't need to take it forever and ever. Once your levels are up, your body will maintain that it's not excreted like other water soluble vitamins that if levels are a bit high we'll just get rid of it through the urine for example vitamin d will stay in the body um, so once you have an ideal level of vitamin d that you might take what's called a maintenance dose depending on what your doctor advises but you don't need to be on it long term but the point the takeaway point from uh, today's conversation is that vitamin d may have a significant role on fertility, but what we're seeing with this new research may actually have a more important role with risk of miscarriage. So it is something important to discuss, identify, and if needed, treat.